told you you could get a follow up, yes. What was the joke? See? <laughs> <laughs> so Kelly, Kelly's rolling. All Kelly's right. Rolling. So we're going to go ahead and kick off yeah. our post race press conference here at Bristol Motor Speedway for tonight's Bass Pro Shops America's Night Race. We've now been joined by our race winning crew chief, Cliff Daniels, and Jeff Andrews who is the team president and general manager at Hendrick Motorsports. Thank you both for joining us and congratulations on that dominating victory tonight. We're gonna go ahead and open up questions from the media. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. We're gonna start over here with Matt Weaver. Matt Weaver, Sports Not. Really, either one of you can answer this one, but we get to the track today around 1, 1.30 and they say, we're gonna scrape the top and put the PJ1 down. and. I, I guess in some ways it might kind of invalidate everything that happened the day before. How much of a challenge was that to figure out a game plan and get the car to be as good as it was? Go ahead. <laughs> I, I don't know that it was that different from yesterday to today, to be honest, because I think at the test back in, uh, <clears throat> you can correct me, it may have been July or August, I think there was some PJ1 that you know they sprayed on the track then. Typically the, the PJ1 is a lot more residual than like the resin. So I think some of what we saw the last two or three days may have been you know, some hints of the residual PJ1, if that makes sense, on the bottom. So the reapplic reapplication of it tonight, um, you know, before the race, yes, we knew that it was gonna be different. Um, thought it was gonna pick the pace up on the bottom, so we thought it was probably gonna work the tires a little bit harder. And uh, it, honestly, it just ended up being you know, enough grip on the bottom to kind of uh, you know, let the car hook and, and keep going without abusing the tires a whole lot. I don't think there was really many tire issues throughout the whole day. Maybe one guy had a, had a tire go down. But uh, yeah, it's certainly a little bit of a guess, but nothing that different than kind of what we would expect for typical Bristol, you know, before the resin, before, you know, the, the tire that wore out in the spring and, and all that. And then from a, a momentum standpoint, I mean, you guys had such a huge playoff point margin that you, you, can, you can't coast ever, but you guys had less to lose, I guess. Um, was it important to close out this round with such a dominating performance given that this round started kind of frustratingly? Yeah, I definitely think it was important. And, and the way we see it is when, when each round resets, um, you, you really have to make sure you're batting um, you know, with what everybody else is or, or scoring close to par, however you want to say it. Um, there was a lot of stage points that we missed out on the last two weeks, uh, of course, in race wins. Um, you know, just with some issues that we kind of created for ourselves, you know, obviously Atlanta was kind of a fluke thing uh, coming to the end of a stage where we could have gotten some decent stage points there. So we, we had it on our radar that, you know, if we could <laughs> perform and execute the way that we needed to, um, at least get a stage win or two here or there. And, and you know, you, you never know if you're going to get a win. But uh, it was important for us to try to finish the round really strong and, and, and handle what we could on our own to leave less to chance, um, you know, w the way it was going to come down to points and everything by the end of today. Bob Hawkers, Fox Sports. For Cliff, was your car set up for the tires from last fall or the tires from the spring? And what happened to the tires <laughs> from it, the it was, spring? Yeah, good question. It was kind of a mix. And, and I will highlight um, our, our sim group and, and our simulator group, uh, the, the Hendrick Motorsports folks in conjunction with, with Chevrolet. We got to work a lot since last fall and since the spring on trying to do the best that we could to come up with... Uh, a little bit more of just a complete package, a little bit more of a well-rounded package. Um, you know, the balance of the car, the wear of the tires. So the best uh, way I could answer your question, Bob, would be that it was kind of a hybrid setup of uh, what we thought could live in, in a high tire fall-off environment like the spring. And, and honestly, I think the simple answer for what happened from last fall to this spring to again today has a lot to do just with ambient temps and track temp. Um, you know, the, the hotter that that that, you know, tire gets it, it, it starts to have a little bit of oil that comes out of the surface and, and tacks it up. And then that lays it down into the surface a lot better. Um, plus, we had, you know, two, three days worth of racing on the track here this weekend uh, before we got on track. So I think all those factors kind of went into what we saw today. And, and if we're being honest, the race today played out very similar to what it did, you know, last fall. Um, you know, just the overall scope of the race and, and lack of cautions, a lot of green flag runs and, and tire wear not really being that big of a thing. Is there a middle ground that, I mean, everybody loves the spring in the sense of there's tire wear and this was a challenge? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it would be very hard to recreate the spring again because of the element of surprise. Um, I do think it's a real thing at the con concrete tracks. A lot of folks may not remember. There was a practice at Dover a year or two ago where it was a really cool day, and the, the, the race tire at Dover that weekend really looked like what the Bristol tire looked like in the spring. It was really powdery, dusty, you know, to, to the cords right away. And, and that race weekend in Dover, the sun came out on Sunday and it, the track took rubber and, and kind of fixed everything. So I think a lot of that is, is what's at play here. Um, everyone is certainly gonna have their opinion on what you wanna see, but I, I just find it hard, hard to think that we could sustain or recreate you know, the environment of what happened in the spring. Um, and and you know, from, from my seat, yes, we, we led a lot of laps today, but there was a lot of really good hard racing today, a lot of side-by-side -side battles. You, know, you, you had multiple lanes working. I don't know. That makes for a really good race, in, in my opinion, from a racer standpoint. So uh, I'm okay with, with the way it was today. Less chaos. All right. Our next question will go to Zach Serlino over here, and then we'll get here to the middle. We've got a couple in the middle. Scar.com, <clears throat> Cliff. Um, the last five weeks have just produced uncharacter uncharacteristic results for you guys. I know you touched on the circumstances a little bit there earlier. What does it do internally for this number five team to sort of reestablish this level of dominance? Um, obviously, um, I don't think anyone is underestimating what this team is capable of, but when you have a we have, well, but what does this a run like this do for this team? <clears throat> well, I, th I think the, um, you know, the last five weeks where you can say we struggled or, or had mishaps, you know, the, the couple things that we look at, um, all of those weeks we've had a lot of really good performance sitting on the table. Like the, there's been a lot of things that have been there for us to take advantage of. And for one reason or another, you know, things didn't work out, we make a mistake, whatever the case may be. So behind the scenes, we've had to work really hard to just get stronger. And, and I think in, in an environment like that and with the team that we have, um, culture matters, the, the guys on the team matter, um, having everybody bought in, you know, to the same direction of what our goals are, being very honest and open with each other on mistakes and challenges and areas that we need to improve. Um, you know, and with that, leadership matters. And, and, and I've got to be the one to, to help make sure to keep us positive and moving in the right direction. And um, we, we have a, such a great environment with the leadership from Mr. Hendrick and, and Jeff Andrews and a lot of folks around us um, to let us know that they've believed in us. They know that, uh, you know, the, the team can pull out of, you know, kind of the hole that we, we dug for ourselves. And, uh, and I'm, I'm so, you know, proud of the team and thankful, uh, you know, for the culture that we have at Hendrick Motorsports to, to be able to be with a group of people that are so like-minded and so bought in uh, to the collective goal. All right, we've also been joined by our race winner, Kyle Larson. Before we take questions for Kyle, I do want to wrap with Jeff and Cliff. Are there any questions that were for Jeff? Okay, we'll take Trent's question. Huh? For Cliff. Okay, so you do not have a question for Jeff? You're good? Okay. Man, Jeff? he missed Mr. Hendrick's plane to come here, and y'all didn't even get Somebody <laughs> give him one question, please. Oh, he missed the no, plane. I got left. I, oh, you got left. left. I got okay. Left. Oh, <laughs> please give him a question. Somebody. It was any, any mining him. <laughs> All right. What are your feelings right now about having to be here and sit on that plane? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Andrews, you, you have all 400 cars locked into the next round of playoffs. <laughs> Tell us about that. Oh, Cliff, thanks for that question. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> uh. All right, Jeff, we'll go ahead and let you go. Well, oh, do you do have a... Yeah, okay, sorry. Hey, Jacob does have a question. Yeah. Okay, we'll let Jacob go, then Trent will come back to you. Go ahead, Jacob. Jacob's the only one race face digital. Jeff, uh, you've seen a lot of memories over the years at Hendrick Motorsports, a lot of good drivers and a lot of great cars. Where do you rate this performance that Kyle put on tonight? No, uh, it's right up there at the top. You know, certainly a dominating, dominating performance, you know, from start to finish and... Um, <laughs> You know, it, it takes so much, um, you know, to make a night like this happen, right? Everything, you know, has to go right. Pit stops and, uh, you know, obviously didn't have a lot of cautions. And, uh, you know, but to have a car that has that kind of pace all night long. And um, Cliff talked about it earlier about, you know, the work that's been done uh, at Hendrick Motorsports, at Chevrolet. Uh, you know, it, it takes all those things uh, behind the scenes to put race cars on the track like we did tonight. So I'm super proud of that effort. Um, I was in victory lane and, and 
saw Jeff Gordon come up to Kyle and ask him if he was going to break every one of his records before <laughs> he was done. So, uh, but uh, yeah, just a, a great accomplishment by these two guys. Super proud and uh, ready to get on to Kansas with our four cars. All right. I believe that is our final question for Jeff and our only question for Jeff. So we'll go ahead and let you go. I hate that you missed that plane, though. So hopefully there's another one that can get you can get you home for that. And we will. We, oh, no. Yeah. Now you have to drive. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, I'll get home. I'm promise you that. I'm not going to make him drive. No, he's, he's going to be at the front of our plane. OK, yeah. someone please yeah. give him a seat on a plane. OK, um, <laughs> next we'll go to Trent. Go ahead, Trent. Uh, Trent Warsham with FrontRace.com. Cliff. Um, you and Kyle have worked together for a long time now, have a great relationship. When you have a dominating performance like this with a driver leading, leading all these laps, how, how are you coaching him through that? You know, what is the mindset as a crew chief, you know, with such a dominating performance where you may, outside of maybe a few adjustments, there's really, really not a, much needed there. One thing that I would say that's, that's really critical to days like today for us, um, we've seen each other fail. And, and that is so important to why we succeed. So when I think about today, I don't think about what we did to succeed. I think about what we did to build ourselves to this point. Um, you know, we, we've had the conversations of, of good and bad along the way. We've, we've seen the ups and downs. We've learned, um, you know, really how to simplify and, and just stay focused on the mission. And uh, you probably heard me a lot on the radio today. Hey, man, mission right now is, is this. And, uh, of course, a lot of times I was trying to tell him to slow down and he was going faster. But... Uh, that, that's uh, that's important to have, and and certainly thankful for the relationship that we have. But we've had to build it, and we've certainly been through a lot together, and uh, hopefully have a lot more days to come. All right. Any final questions for Cliff? Okay, we're gonna take one final question for Cliff for Matt, and then he'll he'll be good to go. Cliff, go ahead, Matt. Weaver Sports, not actually for both of you guys. So you look at the second round; the construction of it is very similar to this last round, and that there's a super speedway. Uh, a road course which has been drastically changed into something uh, and then a more traditional racetrack so with the narrower margins of error is that kind of nerve nerve wracking as this first round was go ahead um sure i, I guess i i mean i like that uh <clears throat> kansas is first you know rather than you know being the last in the round like <clears throat> you know kind of like how this round, um, you know, ultra confident coming to Bristol, but it's the final, you know, race of the round where, you know, the next one, it's like, okay, if I can go to Kansas and just do a really good job and, and you know, get good stage points, get a good finish, you know, you have a little bit more comfort going to Talladega um, rather than, you know, Atlanta, like you finish dead last and it's like, ah, oh, like you're just kind of stressed the whole time. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's, it's constructed similarly but different um but i don't know it's just uh the roval to me has been uh, i've had a, a lot of uh, moments of stress um there throughout my my playoff career um hopefully you know we're in a better position once we get there and and you know can have less stress because it's uh it's pretty stressful it's more stressful than talladega for sure <laughs> yeah my answer would be um we're, we're a very process oriented <laughs> team so the way we prepare for every race really is the same. Daytona 500 or, you know, Kansas in the spring, Kansas in the fall, any other race of the year, um, all we want to do is make our process better. So it's, it's kind of hard to get lost in the, you know, the what ifs and all the things of, of Talladega and, and, and of course the Roval and yeah, Kansas, because I guess, I guess my point is we're going to approach all those races the same way, the same work ethic, the same process, the same if we execute our day, we're going to be fine. And, and what are the steps to execute our day? So certainly a lot of variables. You know, all these races have had so many variables that you can get in trouble really quick, which I think is, is almost a, uh, a good reality check because it makes you dig that much deeper into uh, finding the ways to, to go execute. So that's no matter what, that's going to be our focus. All right, Cliff, we'll go ahead and let you go. Congratulations Thank you again. Thank you for spending some time with us. Yeah. We'll now take questions for Kyle. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll work to get a mic to you. We'll start here with Ben, and then we'll make our way to Jacob and Stephen. Uh, Kyle, Ben White with Fayetteville Observer USA Today. Obviously, you had a great car tonight. Uh, you, I noticed that you were close to a lot of cars that you had to be really patient around those cars 
Did that cross your mind? Were you worried about the cars maybe that you were trying to pass getting into you tonight? Because you were, it seemed to me like you were very patient around those cars. Yeah, I mean, I, I was patient. I, I mean, for up until the last stage, it was it was a lot of lapping the same guys <clears throat> in the way that, you know, kind of the runs would play out and all that. It was very similar every time. You know, I, I struggled mostly with, with Suarez, which he was racing really hard to um, – advance and I'm not even sure if he did or not but um <clears throat> you know he so he was racing really hard which I understood and um and then you know uh, a couple other guys were just just fast enough you know I could work the bottom and just stay inside of them but um yeah I just felt like I you know I just needed to be patient down there I felt like I was doing a better job saving my tires down there just had to you know not forget that they were out there and not you know kind of run into them and and you know spin or anything like that so yeah it uh when you have a car that good you it helps you know to stay focused and patient and, and uh, we are able to do that okay our next question will go to trent and then jacob or i'm sorry steven go ahead <laughs> steven some com. kyle you had 462 laps today which i believe is the most by any driver at this track since 1977 was there ever a point where the car just didn't feel perfect? And where does this rank among the best cars you've driven in Cup? Um, so the only the only time the only run where I got like a little bit, um, just uh, you were know, had to think like, okay, is my is the track changing, or did I just overrun my right rear tire, or, or what was the uh, second run of the race? And and I I once I got to the third run, I just came to the conclusion that in the second run I just I just ran too hard, um, trying, you know, I got, I, I passed Suarez and then he was able to get back kind of by me. And I, I pushed, you know, pretty hard for, I don't know, 15, 20 laps. And <clears throat> once I eventually got clear of him or a couple guys, then I was, I was like out of the racetrack and it was just slick and loose and just less grip. Um, but uh, thankfully, you know, Cliff and them, I, I don't think they made any adjustment after that. I just didn't really know what to kind of communicate to them what I was feeling about. I just said, I was like, I don't know. I just have less grip now. And then the next run, um, you know, I was able to pass Daniel pretty or, or quicker and get back to kind of just doing what I wanted to do and, and manage my tires and, and my balance felt great again. And it, it felt great all night. So yeah, just, uh, kind of had to manage my stuff. Um, so yeah, no, my car was really good. Um, I've had lots of great race cars, um, at Hendrick Motorsports, you know, sometimes they've turned into wins. A lot of times, you know, they, they haven't. Um, I look at, you know, kind of one that is more recent would probably be like Iowa this year. I felt like my car was extremely good there. Um, and just unfortunately, you know, didn't uh, close out that one. Um, but yeah, I've, I don't know, 2021, I had a lot of great cars. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I, I could, if I looked at the schedule, I could probably point out some great cars but uh, tonight was definitely one of them and then heading into this weekend six of the last seven races ended in overtime um how much you know especially with the last laps ticking down i think it was like 170 laps green to the end with the laps ticking, ticking down how much kind of was that thought of what if there's a caution kind of in the back of your mind it's always in the back of your mind for sure um but you know as i was looking out my windshield and i can't see what's on the other side of the racetrack but what was out in front of my windshield everybody was kind of spread you know equally apart so i was like okay well as long as nobody you know it was a long really really long run so i was like as long as nobody has any tire failures i don't think we're gonna have a caution here um so yeah and then you know, cliff and them they're trying to slow me down to to save my tires in case we do have a caution because i could tell that we were our call was probably gonna be to stay out um but i'm like man i'm, I'm trying to get to the white flag as quick as i can you know i i, I don't want to slow down and and you know cost myself a second and then miss the start finish line by a second um you know, before a caution comes out or something but uh thankfully everybody kept it clean and um you know, were able to uh run that whole last run out because yeah i would have got uh, pretty crazy at the end all right we'll go to jacob there we go jacob's the one race face digital kyle uh two for you first um we all know you've done a lot of memorable things in a lot of different types of race cars. Uh, when you have a night like tonight where, you know, 
somebody comes up to you after the race, I think Jeff came to you in victory lane and goes, are you, you know, like Jeff Andrews was saying, are you going to break all my records? When you have a night like this where you put your name in that conversation or ahead of that conversation of guys like Jeff and Jimmy, I mean, do nights like this surprise you or is it just, uh, it's another day in the life of Kyle Larson? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. It's not like when I came to Hendrick, I didn't, I didn't have any goals of beating any records of, you know, any of the others, um, you know, Jimmy or Jeff, you know, those are the two guys that probably have most all of the records I would assume. Um, <clears throat> so it's not, it's not something that's like that I'm like reaching for, but, uh, you know, when it, when it happens, it's really cool. You know, like I was, I was really happy and proud to surpass Jeff and in, in laps led in the season in 2021. And then, you know, tonight, um, I'm assuming I, I passed either him or Jimmy, you know, based off how much they dominated <laughs> in the 2000s. So, um, <clears throat> no, it, it's really cool. But at the same time, yeah, I don't, I think like, you know, whenever I'm done racing or done being a driver at Hendrick Motorsports, um, and those records are still there, then yeah, it'll mean a lot to me. But for right now, it's like, you're just trying to do a good job and, and, um, you know the records records will take care of themselves i guess but uh yeah i'm sure i'll be able to kind of think about it more when i'm down the road give us a look inside the the victory dynamic or kind of the family dynamic because obviously gotten to see a lot of owens racing up and coming the last few years uh and the moments like tonight that he's been able to celebrate with you uh what do these moments mean to you? And I guess in, in, in contrast, what does it do for him as far as motivation, you know, seeing your success and wanting to be more successful in his own right? I don't know, Owen. What do you think? Oh, he's hiding over there. I didn't even see him. When I win, does it motivate you to win? <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's cool. I, I Obviously, I love... Um, have my family here and I don't really I feel like ever win when they're here but uh and I guess only a quarter of them were here tonight but um no I, I was uh you know I got the checker flag and we were pitted our pit stalls on the back stretch I was like oh, I'm gonna go drive down to the back stretch and you know maybe my pit maybe my team's on the wall and I can celebrate with them and um and as I drove by I saw Owen was on pit road celebrating I was like man that's cool you know I I knew he went to the suite, or I thought they went. You went to the suite during the race, so I thought you know I'd I'd meet him in Victory Lane or something. You know, by the time it took to get all the way down, but when I saw him, there, I was like, oh cool, I'm gonna stop right here and uh, have him hop on and go slow, so I don't hopefully get in trouble. Um, so yeah, no, it's just cool building memories like that, and and I'm 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 hoping you know he will remember these moments for the rest of his life, and you know hopefully someday when. You know, he's winning races and has a family of his own. He'll get to, you know, find his own way to celebrate with his children. All right, we're going to go upstairs to the press box. Mark Garrow, PRN. Kyle, what's the dynamic like? You have all 400 cars now moving on to the round of 12. They're your teammates, but you're all after the same prize. You have basically the same equipment, some of the, the best in the business. So how does that I mean, how does that dynamic work? You want to be teammates, but you also all want the big prize. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. I think we all <clears throat> work really well together, and, and the teams throughout the week do as well, um, probably even more closer than, you know, the drivers get to work with each other just because the te you know, crew chiefs and engineers and team members, they're with each other every day. Um, but, no, I mean, I think you know, we, we just try to help each other out and, and – we want Rick and Linda Hendrick to have the best odds going into Phoenix to win a championship in the 40th season. So you don't do that by not working together. So, um, you know, that, it doesn't change at all. If anything, I feel like we work closer together when it gets to this point in the season. So um, proud of that for sure. Um, I think, you know, in, in the time that I've been there, you know, it's been great. Um, but it, but it sound, it had sounded like before 2021, like they really had to build into that, you know, for a few seasons. So yeah, it's, it's a great, uh, great thing right now, at Hendrick Motorsports. And, um, yeah, really cool to have four in the top 12 here and, and, uh, all four are running really, really good too. So 
you know, Alex, Alex has been performing outstanding. Um, it's been really cool to see, you know, William, he's always fast. You can never count him out. He could go on a stretch of winning, you know, these, the, all three races of this round and, and you wouldn't be surprised. And same goes with Chase. He's just, he's just sneaky good. And, um, you know, Alan, everybody works really hard. So yeah. And then you, then you have our team that's uh, really strong as well. So it's, it's fun right now. My follow-up question, obviously we won't see another racetrack like Bristol, but is this a, a victory that kind of sends a message? I mean, it was so dominating, so powerful, and you put the other teams, you know, in the ground, so to speak, tonight. Is this, is, is this a, maybe a message victory to those guys? Like, either, if, if they're going to win the title, they're going to have to come through you. I don't – I mean, I, I don't really think it a performance like tonight sent a message because I think – I would think that majority of the teams, you know, we've dominated lots of races. You know, we've led over, we've led the most laps in, in a number of races. So I think, I think teams already know that we're capable of doing it on any given weekend. But, um, you know, it, it's definitely nice to do it. But there's also so many other great teams out there. So, um, no, I, I don't think a performance like tonight just – puts us as the sure favorite you know it's just hard you know every week changes in the playoffs so just got to uh keep bringing fast race cars and keep executing like like we did tonight and, and hopefully you know more good runs will come all right we'll take one final question up front here from bob make it a good one bob <laughs> it's the final question of the night bob parker's fox sports when did you realize that you're going to be able to go 100 laps on tires instead of like 40 or 50 in the spring? Um, <clears throat> I would say probably by lap 10 in practice. Um, you know, like just you're visually scanning the racetrack, you know, looking for marbles and stuff. And um, I didn't see any. So um, I was like, all right, I was happy um, for sure. Because <clears throat> I know you, you guys probably think that the race in the spring was better, but as a driver, I would way rather run 100% all night long for 500 laps and run 50%. You know, I don't think that's much of a race. So um, I grew up racing different stuff, you know, where you do push the whole race. Um, but I don't know. I, I think that version of Bristol is way more exciting. All right, Kyle. Congratulations again. We appreciate you spending some time with us. Thanks.